the 2016 Buick Verano. Now this is a compact luxury sedan that if you want one, I really think you better hurry to your nearest Buick dealership because the Verano's time is very limited. I'm Jay and welcome to this latest episode of Car Buzz Unboxing Reviews. And I wanna thank Woodland Motors for letting us come on down and film today. So the Buick Verano, now I know this is a car that is oftentimes overlooked because, well, it's just, a Buick and it's a compact luxury sedan and a lot of people are buying crossovers these days but I still think it's really worth uh, a look for a lot of people because I think it checks a lot of the right boxes and I'm always looking for um, a good bargain and especially this is sort of like in my opinion a luxury bargain. Now the Verano it first launched in the US for the 2012 model year and it was basically the first compact sedan Buick sold in the US since 1998 and 1998 was when the old Skylark uh, was still alive and it was its final model year and if you remember that old 1998 Skylark it was just absolute crap. But this new entry-level compact luxury sedan, uh, the Skyworks replacement was a lot, a lot better in just every single way. Essentially, the Verano, it's essentially, a, it's a rebadged Opel Astra, and it's built on the same platform as the previous generation Chevrolet Cruze. Now, that begs the question, why isn't the Verano now built on the all-new platform for the current Chevrolet Cruze? Why, basically, why is there not a second-generation Verano? The simple answer is, is that 2017 is going to be the Verano's final model year. This is it. There is no success for, uh, successor planned. And the reason being is that Buick is just selling an awful lot more crossovers. In fact, Buick expects 70% of its U.S. vehicle sales to come from crossovers alone. You have the uh, Encore, the Envision, and the Enclave, the subcompact, compact, and uh, mid-size crossovers all right there. And compact sedans like this just aren't selling as well. But there's still a lot to like about the Verano. And this interior, they call it uh, medium titanium. It's got a lot of nice standard bits. It's got a 7-inch color touchscreen, dual zone automatic climate control, remote control start, a leather wrap steering wheel and shift leather, uh, uh, leather uh, six-speaker audio system, fabric sport bucket front seats with uh, leatherette bolsters, heated front seats as well, 8-way power driver's seat, and an 8-way manual front passenger seat too. Some uh, standard connectivity you get with it is a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot, Bluetooth OnStar, it's just an overall very good package. And the rear seat, yeah, you can see here, it, it, it is a bit snug. And I think that is probably the Verano's uh, biggest drawback, especially for buyers who, well, they want to use the back seat for tall passengers. So I can understand why they might bulk at the Verano uh, for the lack of rear seat space. Now, there's three trims that you can get in the Verano. You have the base model, the Sport Touring, which is this one here, and the top of the line. Believe it or not, they call it the Leather. Yeah, that is the name of the trim. And as you can see from this dash design, yeah, it's nice, but it's definitely dated. I really do like it, but I, I think there's just there's too many buttons. And as we've seen with a, like pretty much every new car today, uh, automakers have found ways to just simplify the dashboard designs by eliminating the buttons and incorporating them into the touchscreen interface instead. And if Buick was really serious about the compact luxury uh, uh, sedan market, there'd be an all new Verano right now or probably be debuting at any moment. Now this is Buick's IntelliLink uh, uh, infotainment system and as i've said on uh, previous buicks it's okay um i don't think it's the best on the market it's uh but i think it's color clarity and uh, the basic uh, logic behind the the functions are, are all very good i do like ford sync 3 uh, system which is also uh, all new a lot better than this one but i think a majority of verano buyers won't be disappointed by it So let's talk some uh, basic safety here. Now, this is really good. The, the, the Verano has earned a five-star overall U.S. government crash test rating. In fact, it earned five stars on all the tests except for the rollover test where it got four stars. So not bad. Uh, it also has driver and front passenger airbags, knee side and head curtain airbags, 
uh, rear outboard passenger side impact and head curtain airbags too. Stability track stability control with traction control, four wheel ABS brakes and a tire pressure monitoring system. So yeah, you get a lot of all the basic safety bits uh, included standard. However, if you want things like forward collision alert, uh, rear cross traffic alert, lane departure warning, side blind zone alert. You're gonna have to pay for the uh, for, uh, driver confidence package, and that costs an extra eight hundred and ninety dollars. But I think it's eight hundred ninety dollars, very well spent. Those are, in my opinion, very important systems to have. And you're starting to see a lot of cars today come standard with something like for collision alert. But again, because the Verano was older, it Buick just decided not to make it standard but the overall build quality here of uh the verano i was yeah i was for the most part impressed with it uh that's not real wood trim uh not a big surprise there i think uh general motors is basically saving all the higher end materials such as wood trim for cadillac again they don't want buick to become an internal competitor to cadillac instead they're making buick more of a competitor to let's say acura whereas cadillac is being aimed towards bmw and audi etc but the overall seating position yeah it's it's fairly comfortable uh, I think the biggest complaint people might have is they don't sit up high enough, and if they want that, they're going to go for one of the three Buick crossovers, and that's why the Verano is being discontinued. But I also think now is a really good time uh, to buy one because Buick dealerships need to sell them. they got to get them off those dealership lots, and you're more likely now than ever to, uh, to get a good deal. So you can get a total of five passengers in the Verano, obviously two in the front, three in the back, but definitely three in the back is going to be uh, a really tight squeeze. Even just two tall passengers in the back is going to be uncomfortable for them after not too much time driving. But over the years since the Verano was launched, Buick has sold nearly 32,000 of them in the U.S., so... The Verano is not by any means a failure. It's done quite well for Buick, but like I said earlier, is that Buick has seen a slide in compact sedan sales. People want crossovers, and one of the reasons why is because gas has gotten cheaper again in the US, and crossovers, even though they are car-based, they're still heavier, they still consume more fuel, and well, people are not as concerned anymore about conserving fuel because gas is cheap. Yeah, see the rear uh, seat there? Yeah, it's spacious enough, but uh, again, I think that's one of the Verano's biggest drawbacks. Uh, not enough knee space, especially. What I did like here is that, yeah, this is a, a really nicely sized trunk, especially for a compact uh, sedan here. You have 60-40 uh, split folding rear seats. And I also did a recent uh, unboxing review of the Dodge Dart, and that is, again, another compact sedan that is being killed off, I believe, for 2016. And I said the same thing about that in regards uh, to what I'm saying now about the Verano. It's a good time to go out and buy one. Um, again, dealerships need to get them off lots. And with the Verano, yeah, you're getting a very solid, actually really like borderline, almost luxury car here. So how does it drive? Well, I have to say, it's it's a very comfortable and refined ride. It's got predictable handling with a little bit of body lean. Uh, it's not a sports sedan by any means, but it does have sort of a sporty feel. However, this engine here, this is a naturally aspirated 2.4 liter uh, Ecotech four-cylinder with 180 horsepower, 171 pound-feet of torque. It's paired to a six-speed automatic, which sends power to the front wheels only. There is no all-wheel drive option. Now... Up until, I believe, about 2015, maybe even for 2016, Buick offered an optional turbocharged 2-liter forward, 250 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. Uh, fantastic engine, but it's gone. But let's give this one a listen here. Oh, 
All right, performance, zero to 60 miles per hour in an eventual 8.6 seconds. Uh, top speed's electronically limited to 118 miles per hour. Now, zero to 60 in, six, in 8.6 seconds is slow. For an example, with that turbocharged two liter uh, four cylinder I previously mentioned, that has a zero to 60 time of 6.2 seconds. Uh, yeah, so this is a slow engine, but you do get decent fuel economy, 21 miles per gallon in the city, 32 on the highway, and a combined 25, and the vehicle weighs just under 3,500 pounds. Now, this exterior here, this is what they call graphite gray metallic. It costs an extra $395. In fact, this exterior paint is this particular car's only option, but it also comes standard with these 18-inch aluminum wheels. It's got a rear spoiler, chrome exhaust tip, halogen projector beam headlamps, uh, uh, front fog lights, uh, solar tinted glass, heated outside mirrors, and uh, yeah, it's just a general... I think nice looking car. I really do like that that front grille design. And another thing that's nice about the Verano is Buick invested a lot in the sound deadening materials just to make it uh, just to give it a very very quiet ride. You barely hear the road. The one thing you do hear though is that 2.4 liter uh, four cylinder engine just working so hard to haul around 3,500 pounds. Uh, again, it's a real shame that turbocharged 2 liter is gone. Uh, in fact, what was really cool about it is that you could also get that 2 liter uh, 4 banger with a 6 speed manual option, at, actually at no cost. So, by noticing that Buick is simplifying the options, thus eliminating that turbo 4 cylinder engine, uh, it shows that, yeah, they are phasing the Verano out. So what's the pricing for it here? Well, a base price for a Verano is $21,990. Our mid-level Sport Touring has a base price of $24,065, but our car has that $395 uh, exterior paint plus a $925 destination fee. So the grand total for this is $25,385, which really is not bad for a compact luxury or premium sedan, considering the average new car in the U.S. is around $33,000 right now. So what's some of the competition? Well, usually more expensive options. You have the uh, Audi A3 sedan, the Acura ILX, and maybe even the Mercedes-Benz CLA class. But uh, the Audi and the Mercedes, they both start in the low 30s, and they can easily climb to about $40,000 once you tack on those options. So I think this the Verano's most direct competitor is the Acura ILX. It starts at around $29,000 and goes up to around $36,000. But then again, the ILX is basically just... Um, a rebodied and fancier version of the previous generation Honda Civic. So what do I like here? Well, it's got a nice high quality interior. Uh, it looks luxurious. It's got a really nice quality ride. And I think, yeah, it's got a very good base price, especially when compared to the competition I just mentioned. What don't I like? Again, my main complaint, the rear seats are kind of tight and there's no more turbo engine or six speed manual transmission offering whatsoever. Now, some of the extra packages you can get aside from the uh, driver confidence package that, again, is $890. You have the uh, Experience Buick package. That's really what it's called. And for an extra about $2,000, you get a Bose uh, nine-speaker audio system and a power sunroof. There's also the uh, interior protection package for $200 and the uh, exterior protection package for $395. Now, I was recently talking to uh, a Buick uh, PR rep and, again, just trying to press him further. Is there any chance whatsoever uh, some sort of another compact luxury sedan like the Verano will debut at any time whatsoever? And the answer was a pretty confident no. Um that's that's what crossovers are doing, and uh, Buick is not the only automaker to potentially kill off a sedan in favor of a crossover. Remember, crossovers make more money for automakers. But the 2016 Buick Verano, it's unchanged for 2017. If you're looking for an excellent value for a premium compact sedan, this is it. I do like it and recommend it. But I'm out of time for today. Thanks for watching, anyone. If you have any more questions for me about the Verano, just leave them for me in the comment section below. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the Car Buzz Unboxing YouTube channel. And I got a lot of cool stuff coming up for you, so uh, tune in. And I hope to see you all in my next unboxing review.